Hi teachers, I'm Mark Richard, Educational Services Manager for Oxford University Press. So in this video I will answer this question, why aren't students motivated and what does motivate them? Hey, that's two questions. So let's think about that first. First, let's think about your experience here. So if you'd like to, pause the video and discuss or think about these two questions. First, why aren't some students motivated to learn English? Hmm, that's a big question. And the other side of that is, what motivates your students the most? Now, these are two different sides of the same coin. So in this video, I will focus on the second question and you will see that what motivates your students is great to know and it's the lack of that which is demotivating. So what motivates students? I've heard lots of answers from teachers and teacher trainers and we can see a few of them popping up on the screen behind me. Some of these answers are to do with psychology, some are about lesson design or task design, some relate to the dynamics and relationships between teachers and students. It's all pretty complicated. So there's lots of information coming from different sources and it can be very confusing which advice do you follow? For me, I like to follow the advice from ELT researcher Dornier. Joltan Dornier and Kata Zizet did a famous research piece called 10 Commandments for Motivating Language Learners, Results of an Empirical Study. And I find it very, very useful. So I'm going to share this with you and see what you think. A little bit of context, the study was undertaken with teachers and students in Hungary. So think about that, and mostly university and secondary level students. What you have on the screen here are the 10 commandments for motivating language learners. These are the top 10 strategies for motivating language learners chosen out of 51 different strategies. So can you guess what the top three motivating strategies are. I shall now reveal them. We're going to do the top three, starting with number three. So number three is present the tasks properly. If you present tasks properly to your students, they will be happy and motivated. If you don't, your students will be confused and demotivated. Let's think from the student's perspective about what this means. When you present a task to your students, they want to know what are they doing? Why are they doing it? And how do you expect them to do the task? And if you don't tell them, they will feel confused and demotivated. On the other hand, if you tell your students what they're about to do, why they're doing it in terms of how it will help their English and exactly how you want them to do that task, they will be clear about what to do and motivated. Okay, so a lot of demotivation comes from students being confused about what they're supposed to do. So think about that. That was number three. Now we're going to reveal number two. Can you guess what it is? So I've scrambled these up. Let's take a look at number two create a pleasant, relaxed atmosphere in the classroom. So let's think about that. This is quite complex. There must be hundreds, maybe thousands of different ways that humans create dynamics between each other. So a lot of this depends on the teacher's personality. What I will say though is that for me, the first class you have, or rather the first lesson you have with a class of students, that's the most important. I don't care about teaching language or getting through any content in my first lesson. I focus totally on getting the class to feel safe, feeling safe to speak and make mistakes. If it's adult learners, I tell them the best way for you to learn is to have a go at speaking. And if you make a mistake, great, we'll learn from that. The worst way for language learners to learn is to be too scared to talk. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. So you do anything you can to get your students feeling safe and contributing to the class. That's more important than learning English in your first lesson. One way to create a great dynamic between you and your students 
is to show that you are listening to what your students are saying. Show that you're interested in who your students are as humans. Get to know them. What do they like to do in their free time? What are their interests and so on? A good listener shows their listening and that's very flattering because the students feel that you care about them, then they'll care about you and that increases motivation. So that's the second most important strategy for motivating students. Time for number one, what will it be? Here it is. Set a personal example with your own behavior. What does that mean? I think a very useful exercise to do around strategy number one is to ask yourself this question. What do you want your students to be like during lessons? So I'll give you a, a bit of time. You can hit the pause button and I'd like you to brainstorm some adjectives that describe your ideal students. Let me see. I want my students to be prepared, um, prompt or on time, respectful, uh, of other students and the teacher, interested, curious, good at listening, happy. Think about what you want your students to be like and how you want them to behave. Have you done that? Okay, next step. Take all those words which describe your ideal student and apply them to you. That's how you need to behave in the classroom. So you are the example to your students. I tend not to like slogans, but I'm going to use one now. Be the behavior you want. If you want your students to show curiosity, you have to show curiosity first as a role model. If you want your students to be well organized, you have to be well organized and your students will see that. So you are the example. Be the behavior you want from your students. There are many types of behavior you can model to your students. I think the most important is to be enthusiastic, right? If your students see that you're not terribly enthusiastic about learning a language or today's lesson material, then why should they feel enthusiastic and motivated about it? This includes showing interest in topics. If you're doing a reading article, look at the topic and think, oh, wow, well, that's interesting. Show that you're interested and engaged and then your students have a chance of being that. Also be prepared. Students can tell when a teacher hasn't prepared well or is disorganized. So prepare well, your students will notice that. They have lots of radar and antenna and they notice things about the teacher. And I've had students come up to me and say, oh, my well, teacher, thank you, you're, you're very hardworking. They just know if you're prepared or not. So here you are in review, Dornier's 10 Commandments for Motivating Language Learners. So which ones do you think are most relevant to you? Which ones are you already pretty good at doing? And which ones could you improve on? Think about that. One interesting question is whether or not these strategies for motivating students work across all cultures. So that's something you can think about wherever you are. Do these strategies translate across cultures? And would these strategies be the same wherever you are teaching now, or would you have to change them? Interestingly, Dornier did some follow-up research with a Taiwanese researcher to look at the top 10 strategies for Taiwan. And there are a few differences. Can you guess what the top three strategies were for Taiwan? Let's take a look. So at number three, promote learners' self-confidence, which was number five in the Hungarian survey. Number two, recognize students' effort and celebrate their success, which is a new one, which wasn't in the original survey. But still, at number one, set a personal example with your own behavior. So clearly, the teacher is the number one factor in terms of motivating their students. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. But before you go, a couple of questions for you to think about. Which of the commandments that you've seen are most about the teacher and are things that you can do? And which of the commandments are more about the content and materials that you use in terms of motivating students? 
And if you'd like to find out about research into getting students engaged in lessons, take a look at this, an impact study, which you'll find in the Smart Choice 4th edition interactive brochure. Smart Choice, a title where we really think about motivating students, especially to get them talking.